this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and as you might guess, seeing this here QWERTY keyboard, this is the BlackBerry Q10. It's going to be available soon on all major U.S. carriers, and for those of you who've been jonesing for the old-fashioned BlackBerry experience with a lovely hardware keyboard but the new updated OS, we're going to look at it now. So here it is, finally, the BlackBerry Q10. QWERTY goodness right here. Definitely at the selling point of the phone for those of you who are still used to the hardware keyboard, you haven't migrated over to those touchscreen keyboards that have evolved to be pretty good over time. I have to say, I used to be pretty addicted to hardware keyboards myself, but still, this is one of the best in the business. It's also one of the few left in the business, so to speak. It's really hard to find QWERTY Android, obviously, iOS, no go, you're not going to get any hardware keyboard there. Windows Phone, not so much, you know, so if you're a hardware keyboard fan, BlackBerry has you locked in right here, right now. It's a very good keyboard. It's got that kind of waterfall sculpted thing going on with the keys, so they're very tactile. You can feel which key your finger is on. You can feel when you've slid off to the next key. It's very distinct. They're nice, and they're clicky, too. Feels great. Pretty good size. It's right up there with the Bold 9900, which has to be one of the, the best Blackberries out there. I think that keyboard was awfully popular. Also very easy to see, also black lit, kind of nice stylish modern minimalist design going on there. And if we take a look from the side, you can see the relief on the keys. Not sticking out a whole lot, that's okay with me, as long as there's some travel and some clickiness going on. It's good. Back to the front here, this is a touchscreen. This is running BlackBerry OS 10.1, so we get that update that BlackBerry recently released that adds a couple of nice features. And, Chief among them, actually, some keyboard optimizations here. So you can do things like, if I type tweet and then a message, it will automatically tweet that message. If I type in BBM Joe Brown, it's going to start a BBM to Joe Brown. So a lot of that going on there. We get HDR in the camera. As always, some speed improvements. And touch screen. Voila. So we get a little bit of modernity there. Certainly, this is a very modern OS and a pleasant OS. I enjoy it quite a lot on the Z10. Uh, one of the challenges is we're, we're shrunk down to 3.1 inches here. So typical of Blackberries of old, even one of the concessions you made to having this hardware keyboard here is less room for display. So you're looking at a fairly small display. The resolution is 720 by 720 pixels. Okay, that's not a huge number of pixels, but then again, this is also a tiny display. So our DPI is still over 300 on this, our PPI rather. So uh, certainly text looks sharp, graphics look sharp on it, but things are small, particularly if you're using something like the web browser, this is not going to be like using your 5-inch Android phone competitor. Certainly, you just have less to work with there. The good part is, it's quite small. I do have fairly big hands, but this guy is just really easy to hold, about 4.6 inches overall on the size factor. If we take a look around the side, not super skinny, but devices with a QWERTY keyboard and a removable battery are not super skinny. By no means is it a fatty either, but you can see we have our micro USB port and our micro HDMI ports here. The USB port you're going to use for charging the phone and also for data transfer, syncing, that kind of thing if you want to do that over a cable. Power buttons up top here just like it is on the touchscreen companion to this, the Z10. Headphone jack right there. Microphones up here. Volume controls, metal, again, a lot like the Z10 in terms of styling. You can see how much they stick out. Pleasant to use, and then our center action button right there. And on the bottom, we have our speaker and another microphone hole. And if you want to take off the back cover, yes, you can. This is not a sealed phone. Good times. Carbon fiber here. I don't think it's just a carbon fiber look because we can see the same thing going on in the inside. So those of you who are car geeks like me, it's kind of cool looking to have the carbon fiber back. And that's also pretty tough. Got a little bit of flexibility in there, which is actually a safe thing. NFC, we can see our contacts back here. Removable 2100 milliamp battery. That's a huge battery for a phone that has a small display and a not very demanding CPU. So you guessed it, battery run times are good. Micro SIM card slot in here, and micro SD card slot right here. You stick the card in that way. Up to 64 gig cards will work, so that's SDXC compatible. While we're looking at the back, we can see we have our LED flash, and this is an 8 megapixel camera. Uh, same camera module that's used in the Z10. You can see a little bit of a gap around the edges over here. It doesn't fit like super tight and flush. Not the end of the world, though, but I know some of you are perfectionists. Look at the HTC One. If you didn't have the most perfect edges, it was not a good thing. So if things like having visible seams bother you, there it is. You'll have some visible seams here. Phone's powered by the same CPU that we saw in the Z10, which is a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon dual-core CPU. 2 gigs of RAM inside, 16 gigs of internal storage. Plus, you can augment that with that SD card slot, put your media files and stuff on there. 
phone has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and a GPS as well. So pretty much everything you expect from your modern smartphone. Two megapixel front camera for video chat on board as well. Call quality on the phone, really good. BlackBerry just does such a good job with that, and it's, it's landline clear. People didn't know we were calling from a cell phone. Dialer interface right here, and you can dial using the on-screen number pad, which is my preferred way because it's a nice, big, easy target. Or you can actually use the keyboard right here. And in fact, if we minimize this and we just start typing, and we're using number keys, it's going to do search and it's going to assume that maybe I'm entering a number. So for those of you who are used to actually using the hardware keyboard to do that, you can do that. As you see, I'm swiping here. We have our little active frames. That's minimized version of running applications. If we want to close them, we just hit the little X button right there. Same thing as the Z10. You're looking at pretty much the same operating system. Just a little update for those of you who have not gotten the 10.1 OS update on your BlackBerry Z10. Same application selection right here. We're looking at the AT&T compatible model. Really, this is also compatible with Canadian carriers, too, who have 850 megahertz 3G and 4G HSPA plus plus LTE on AT&T's band. But again, this is going to be available on all U.S. carriers. We've got our BBM here, calendar. Now that's where our calendar looks like. We Right now we're in agenda view. We can switch to month view, day view, and so on. As you'd expect from a BlackBerry device, it can sync to Exchange, so you can get all your PIM data from your Exchange server. We have BlackBerry World here to download applications, just like we have Google Play Store and iTunes for iOS. Contacts over here, Pictures Viewer, Music Player, pretty decent music player. Again, this stuff is the same as on the Z10, so we won't bore you with going over the same stuff again. We've got a built-in video player. Honestly, a little screen like this, you're probably not going to spend a whole lot of time watching videos, but you could. Story maker, so you can edit videos as you shoot, and a bunch of social networking stuff pre installed your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Foursquare. We've got BlackBerry Maps on board as well. YouTube application, that's really just a shortcut to the mobile YouTube site. By the way, this does have a Adobe Flash player for the web browser, and you can choose to enable or disable it if you notice that web pages are too heavy with Flash and slowing things down. We've got our calculator, we've got our weather, we've got our clock. So all the basics are pretty well taken care of. We've got our Office Suite on board, we've got Adobe Reader box for cloud storage. A fairly complete experience, which is good because still the problem with BlackBerry AppWorld is there's just not a whole lot of applications available, and that becomes a chicken and egg thing. Developers wait to see how many people are going to develop, adopt this lovely phone, and if enough of you do, well, then they're going to say, well, now it's worthwhile for us to put some apps on it. Keyboards full of nice little features like you would expect from a BlackBerry. You even get things like, oh, it's going to tell you if you've got your shift key on right here on the screen so you don't make any mistakes there with your shift being on. And of course we also have the BlackBerry Hub. One of my favorite things right here. Everything in one place. You got your emails, you got your text messages. Yes, I got my spam text messages right here. So go ahead and demon dial those people. They're really annoying us right now. All that's right in here. Easy to take care of. Anything you tap on you can take action on as well. It's not just a view only kind of experience. So if you expect a good messaging experience from BlackBerry, that's what you're getting now. It's a pretty nice unified experience. Gone are all the separate inboxes that you used to have in your email icon even. In fact, it's all managed in BlackBerry Hub. Again, just like the Z10. So speaking of the Z10, let's compare them. Though the Z10 is a relatively small phone, about the same size as the iPhone 5, you can see that it's still going to be taller than our little friend with the QWERTY keyboard here. Thickness is about the same as well. If you view them side on like that. Again, neither of them is thick phones. By the way, under the sides here, this is reinforced with metal, even though it has a plastic cover on top of it, so it's pretty rugged and strong. You can see the size difference. Obviously, the Q10 is getting the more interesting treatment with the carbon fiber look here versus just textured soft-touch plastic on the Z10. Pretty much inside, you're looking at the same internals with both of these guys. Really, the big difference is going to be whether you want this QWERTY keyboard right here and well, the overall display size, that you're going to have to give up a lot of display real estate compared to our Z10 here. And we have a full review of the Z10 on mobiletechreview.com and one on our YouTube channel for those of you who just want to see the video review, too. So you can do your homework on that one if you still need to. And for those of you who are wondering what it's like to use the web browser on a full desktop site, here is our site, Mobile Tech Review, full desktop site going right there. Can you read any of that? God bless you if you can. I can't. That's what pinch zooming is for. Uh-huh, now I can see that. 
And if we do the double tap, it'll zoom in, zoom in on a particular column of text. It still might be a little too small to read. And again, this is 720 by 720, so turning it on this side will not give you any more width or anything like that. It's a square display. Again, we do have Adobe Flash support here in case you can't find the video you need in HTML5 format. As always, for performance reasons, I recommend doing the HTML5 format video if you can, because it's always smoother than Flash, even on this device. So here I've double tapped into a wider column of text and you can see very teeny but still readable. Not still my favorite choice. For mobile websites it's going to be great. Whenever you're looking at those full desktop sites though, you're going to be looking at some small text. Options here, pretty much the same thing that we saw on the Z10. We have a reader mode. That can help, certainly. Let's give that a try. Ah, look at that. That looks pretty in magazine like, doesn't it? We can see those fonts. Lots of text. It strips out most of the graphics, if not all of them there, but... Aha, no, it's plopped them at the end this time. There they are. And actually, you can see those images look pretty nice and sharp here. But we don't get the pinch zoom in reader view. But nonetheless, that's looking pretty nice. And to get out of that, we just hit the back button. So we got book bookmarking tools here under settings. You can see what options we have right here. Display my home page, open a new page, open links in the background in a new page. Adobe Flash on or off. Let's turn that on. And you can even set the default text size. Though sites with CSS, which is most of them these days, will often override that setting anyway. Now that we've looked at the web browser, by the way, I have to say data speeds have been quite good on this on AT&T's LTE network. We have seen good download speeds, 25 megabit per second down and about 14 megabit per second up, which is consistent with other top smartphones on AT&T's network. One thing I like about the UI too is you always have the shortcut here. You got the calling shortcut and we got the camera shortcut. So let's take a look at the back camera. And it doesn't really matter which way you hold it, but we'll just stick with upright. And you can tap to take a photo. You can drag the reticule around to make sure it's focusing on our friend the Z10 right there. Take shots pretty quickly. And settings here, they're pretty basic. We've got flash on, flash off, aspect ratio 1 to 1, 4 by 3, which is the old fashioned photo, or we got the wide aspect ratio. Normal shooting mode, auto shooting mode. We can do stabilization, we can do bar burst, or we can choose HDR. HDR does help, it brings out light areas that are underexposed in a high contrast shot. And if you want to switch to video mode, right there, and we can shoot 1080p video with this. And settings for that, control whether the light's on, stab stabilization, which camera you want to shoot with, and your scene modes. Pretty basic set of scene modes. There are no HDR option available when shooting video. And just by tapping it, we are now shooting a video. And we'll pan around our BlackBerry Z10. And then we'll take a look at that. Actually, it does a pretty good job of keeping things stable when moving around like that. Battery life on this guy, thanks to that 2100 milliamp battery here. Really, that's a huge battery. That's much bigger than what we saw in something like the Bold 9900, which was around 1230. And this is even higher capacity battery than on the Z10. Uh, can't beat it. And, and I think that BlackBerry knew that, you know, folks who use their Blackberries really counted on that long battery life from their old school handhelds. And nowadays with faster CPUs and bright color touchscreens, it's harder to do. So they put that bigger battery in here. The good news is this guy's an Energizer Bunny. Hard to kill on AT&T's LTE network with LTE on and in use. Auto brightness, which is actually pretty bright and sometimes changing that over to about 50% brightness. I had absolutely no trouble getting through a day with heavy use on the phone. That means streaming videos, Lots of push email going on, web browsing, making calls, all that kind of thing. I think a lot of people are going to manage with moderate use to get through one and a half, maybe even two days with this. So really an Energizer Bunny compared to today's smartphones. So all in all, the experience here, again, is really just like the Z10, which is what you would expect. And, and 
I do like the operating system. I know some people are giving it a hard time there. I love the quick BlackBerry Hub access. I love the way we can minimize applications into active frames. And really the big decision for you if you're a BlackBerry person is whether you want to go with all touch screen and the on-screen keyboard. And, and the Z10 has a very good on-screen keyboard or if you want to stick with the hardware keyboard. Just keep in mind that you're giving up a lot of screen real estate here and things are going to look pretty teeny and they're going to sometimes be a little harder to tap on too. So that's the BlackBerry Q10. Again, it's going to be available real soon now on all U.S. carriers. And certainly if you're already a BlackBerry toting person who loves that hardware keyboard, you thought the Z10 was kind of cool, but not your cup of tea, well, this one's probably for you. I don't think it's going to win a lot of converts over from iOS or Android, but I think it's going to hold on to a lot of the BlackBerry faithful, and there are tens of millions of you out there. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review of the BlackBerry Q10, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.